first one closest to the ball maintains possession. Mike yeah. D. Simone. That's correct. On a shot, you'll see the players. For those of you who haven't watched a lot of lacrosse, so we had a goal there. Rob Betchley puts it in net, so the North takes an early lead, makes it one nothing in favor of the North. Rob Betchley puts it in. Well, on, on, for those of you that don't watch a lot of lacrosse, when a shot's taken on cage, you'll see players running to the end line to run out, as they say. And basically what that means is the first guy that gets there retains possession. And here we have a replay of an extra man. That's just a diagonal pass down to uh, Betchley, and he cans it. So face-off between the North and South. Again, after every goal, there's a face-off, regardless of who scores the goal. Battling in there for the North. And trying to scoop it up is John Rogers for the North. Rogers, the big stick, finally comes up with it. Good work for uh, John Rogers. He has trouble with it. As right on him is Brian Kelly for the South. Alan North, Steve Gahuli. Gahuli working upfield on the left flank. So the North wants to get on the attack. 15.36 left here in the first half of play. Yes, this is indeed Homewood Field. We're, we're back in an all-even situation now. Um, and, you know, in an all-star game like this, these guys really don't have a, a lot of time to practice. So I think you're just going to see a lot of basic lacrosse out here on the offensive end with a lot of probably one-on-one -on -one dodging because these guys are all stars where they come from. Betsley had trouble keeping it in and could not. It will go to the uh, south, so the south will have a chance to bring it up. And only four big sticks allowed on the field at a time. They're just underway here from Homewood Field in the first half. South doing a good job of creating some space. Now they're coming on the attack. The fellow you may want to watch here is number 10, Gary Gate. I would imagine they'll be trying to get him the ball when they can. There's Mark Millen. The, now we see Gate. There he is with the ball right now, Gary. Gary Gate. And his brother Paul played at Syracuse together. They were the Golden Gates of lacrosse for a time. Good opportunity there by Kevin Fitterin. But coming up with it is Andy Piazza, the goalkeeper. Now Del Dressel. Piazza. North. I'm sorry, the Piazza, the goalkeeper for the North, was the 1991 College Goalie of the Year uh, from the University of North Carolina. They also won the national championship that year. So I'd expect to see some uh, great play from the North goaltender. Brian O'Keefe now for the North. Trying to get the feed. They try to work it to the slot. The South able to close down on defense. Good work. Court Sandstrom on defense for the South as he clears it away, but it'll be possession back to the North. 1 0. In favor of the North, a goal by Rob Betchley as we look at the North sideline. That was Harvey Cohn, one of the coaches for the North team. And it gets back to a goalkeeper, Jim Schwartz, again in goal. Quick outlet, they work it to Gary Gate. And is he ever fun to watch. Gate, the no-look pass, the look away. He's the Michael Jordan, one of the Michael Jordans, his brother as well, lacrosse, if you will. Yeah, it's one of the unusual things about uh, the Gate brothers. They, they have been compared to the Michael Jordan, but imagine basketball having two Michael Jordans, and that's basically what you have in lacrosse with Paul and Gary. Mike DeSimone takes a shot on goal. Schwartz forced to get the stick down and make the save. Now the South try to work the counterattack. Sean Donnelly. South quickly works it upfield. Looking to equalize in this contest. Mark Millen makes a run, fires a shot, and it'll be possession South behind the cage with 13.03 left here in the first half of play. And Mark, the Millen, the fellow that just took that shot, was the 1994 World Game MVP. Uh, from the University of Massachusetts and plays for me now, actually, at the Mount Washington Lacrosse Club. Mount Washington Lacrosse Club, of course, one of the top club lacrosse teams in the land. Joe Bedell now for the South. Bedell looking for some space. Crafty move, but he gets stick-checked away. South maintains possession. Todd Cavallero. Cavallero tries to get a shot off. He puts it in the net. A goal. Make that actually Mark Millen. Millen gets the goal for the South to equalize with 12.22 left in the first half. So Mark Millen, credit him with that goal. As you can see right here, well, as you can't see right here, but Mark, anytime a defenseman uh, matches up against a kid like Mark, he's got one of the quickest first steps probably in the game right now. And you got to be shaking in your boots when you're trying to cover this kid. I don't know many that can. Works now as a rep for STX. Come on, White. Come on, White. So Mark Millett equalizes this game with 11.54 left here in the first half of play. In this oh, National oh, Club oh, Lacrosse oh, All-Star oh, game. So drop the remote. You're going to enjoy some of the best the game of lacrosse has to offer. 
Chris Malera puts it in play now for the North team. Brian O'Keefe on the right flank. He directs traffic. They work it out to John Holthouse. John's an interesting story. He's like many of these kids. Uh, John played at Loyola College here in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, John is now playing for the Atlanta Lacrosse Club and he's a transplant like many of the kids. They, they play the game on the East Coast at a lot of the major universities and then go elsewhere and and uh, promote the game and start club teams all over the country. Great ambassador for the game that way, Brian O'Keefe. Behind the cage, gets it to Dave King now in the contest. King gets it stick checked away, loose ball, and now the South will try to clear. For the South, that's Brian Kelly. Long ball upfield. He's looking for Sean Donnelly, and it will be possession to the north. So again, as we look at uh, Sean Donnelly backtracking, the north and the blue jerseys, the south and the white jerseys. We have a 1-1 game between the north and south in this National Club Lacrosse All-Star game. About uh, 10 and a half minutes left. And and I the think, first half of play. I think this is typical, what you're going to see in most All-Star games. It's kind of the feeling out process. These kids aren't used to playing with each other. Um, kind of trying to get to know each other and even trying to get to know the people that are on your midfield group or your attack group to know what each other do, does and by by about the second quarter I think they should the feeling out process comes out and I think you'll see the goal production also low shot taken by John Holthouse and once again the north will have possession Brian O'Keefe O'Keefe tried to take the shot Good defense on the part of the South. It'll be pos uh, possession for the North. As, uh, getting in there on defense for the South. Court Sandstrom. He partially blocked the shot. Holthouse now for the North. A pretty good workout. Pete Reich has to step back into the midfield. Now they work it back into the box. And now Holthouse right side of the box. Dave King works behind the cage. He's got Brian O'Keefe right in the middle. King looking to make a feed. And we possession to the south and the white. Good defensive pressure there by Clodston. Kind of his check force that pass out of bounds. So the south now. Mark Millen, who has uh, the lone goal so far for the south. John Connolly now. John with the ball here, number 11, is about equal right and left-handed, which makes for a difficult proposition for any defender. Okay, we just had a whistle. Explain what just happened. Uh, there was, a, I believe, a moving pick inside, which, just like basketball, is illegal, and it's a change of possession. The ball goes back to the north. But not a penalty. We should point out we had one just as we started the game. There are uh, time penalties in the sport of lacrosse that does put a team up with a man advantage. That's correct. There are technical fouls that are 30 seconds, and that would be a foul that if you have the ball, um, and someone fouls you, and it's a technical foul, you will serve 30 seconds. If you don't have the ball, it would be a change, a technical foul would be a change of possession. Then any minute foul would be a major foul, like a uh, slash in the head or something of that nature. Andy Krause with the ball. Krause gets it stick checked away. By the South, by uh, Sean Donnelly. So John Donnelly doing a nice job tonight on defense for the South. And a turnover to the team of the white jerseys. 1-1 one, one the score. We have 8.26 left here in the first. And yeah, Donnelly's a California kid from San Diego. Um, he's really played a, played a big role here early. Don't learn that stuff on the beach, though, that's for sure. No, <laughs> no you don't. John Connolly now for the South. On him is Mike Conway. Conway giving him a good ride. If you'll notice, on a kid is it's a threat like a Johnny Conley, you'll see... Uh, a long stick defender on him just because I, I know these kids all know each other. The coaches know all the players, and they know that Conley, number 11, is a, a pretty good offensive threat, so they put a long stick defender on him. Early the head coach at Falston High School in suburban Baltimore, Maryland. So the South quickly on the inbound, looking to equalize. Nice feet in the middle, trying to get onto it. Rick Kirshner will quickly work it behind the cage. Steve Maroll does his work. Marol steps right in front of the crease. And Marol trying to put it in. I think that ball went in. I think it did too. Yes, it, it is did. in the net and we hesitated because quite frankly, I did not see the referee signal. and was not sure where the ball ended up. So uh, delayed, be it, it's Steve Marol with the goal. Let's watch it. Yeah, Steve's uh, the all-time leading scorer for the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Makes a nice fake there, freezes a goalie, and then dumps it over his opposite shoulder. I think he made such a good fake, he faked out all three referees because nobody made a uh, call there. I had a couple of announcers in that selected group as well. <laughs> so Steve Marol gets the goal, although that's not that great. Poetic, 6.55 left here in the first. 2-1 the score, so the South after trailing one nothing. Jumps right back into this contest. Now on the faceoff uh, for the North, that was uh, Steve Gahuli. 
Dooley was able to come up with a face-off. North has to retreat into their own end and now try to work it up. They have trouble at midfield. Now racing forward is Brian Kelly. Kelly steps in the North box. Kelly, just a great athlete. Uh, kid keeps himself in great shape. Plays for the Maryland Lacrosse Club in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, just, a, just a great athlete. UNC product. Um, you'll see him running up and down the field all night. Mark Millen trying to do some running, trying to go toward the cage. South continues to work it around, doing well right now. And right on the doorstep with an opportunity was Brendan Kelly. And it'll be South possession. So the South certainly has turned up the thermometer offensively here. The last few moments. Millen once again looking behind, coming right in. It's in the net. A goal for the South. Give it to Kevin Finneran. And suddenly the South has a two-goal lead. Kevin's from the uh, Philadelphia Lacrosse Club. Uh, heck of a player. He's, he's a Ohio Wesleyan product. Um, Division three, 1990 midfielder of the year. Um, just a heck of a player, and he's uh, plays for one of the top clubs in the South here, the Philadelphia Lacrosse Club. You see on the replay, is Finneran streaking through. Look at what Andy Piazza had to deal with. And at that point, it was Finneran coming in at that speed, little that Andy Piazza, the goaltender, could do for the North. So the North in the blue jerseys now suddenly trail. And right away, jumping into the fray, Brendan Kelly working hard on defense as he was a stick checking Steve Gahuli. It will be possession, however, to the north. Babe Johnson, Dennis Way at Homewood Field, Johns Hopkins University. This is the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classics National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game. I'm sure many of you fans of lacrosse say, yeah, I remember when Dell Dressel was playing on this field at Johns Hopkins. We're seeing the greats of yesteryear of the college, the greats of present in club lacrosse. And once again, Gahuli trying to work it. Now to Dressel. Dressel gets it stick-checked away and the south. Now, once again, on the run, Sean Donnelly, nice work again for the uh, South on defense. But Dressel, good hustle good to get back, back a scramble for the ball now at midfield. Streaking through DeSimone. There's our friend Sean Donnelly again, coming up big. North with another opportunity. DeSimone set that up uh, for the North. And Kevin Bottas into the contest. That's his first shot. DeSimone now, trying to come around. Successfully warded off. De Simone continues to work. This is Rob Betchley. He takes a shot. That does not go in the net. So Betchley, who's got the lone goal for the North, went again. He went this time to the near post. Thank you. But it goes into the netting. Betchley's an Army product uh, now playing for the Westchester Lacrosse Club in the Central Atlantic League. And Kelly with the ball now for the South. Good look at him as he walks it up. Brent, Brennan should know this field real well. This was his home field for four years when he played for Johns Hopkins University. So he should know the terrain pretty Hold well. On, Todd. Todd Cavallaro. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to get a goal to earlier in the contest. This is the real Todd Cavallaro on the ball now. For the South, nice move, takes a good hard shot. Piazza was down though, to close off the angle. And it was possession to the South. And actually, Cavalier is also a Johns Hopkins product. Uh, Streaking through his Finner, and it's in the net. A goal for the South, and it's suddenly 4-1. to one. And Kevin Finner and Dennis, basically, this time, instead of taking a feed, he just took it himself, but from the same angle. Yeah, Kevin, just a, if you notice, his first goal, I believe, was a right-handed goal. That goal was uh, left-handed, as you can see here, him just breaking through the defense. Just one heck of a midfielder, any coach's dream. He's a great athlete, can go both right and left-handed. Uh, just a fantastic lacrosse player. So Kevin Finneran with the goal. We have the face-off. Face-off so important in lacrosse because it starts everything. Pete Reich was on the face-off for the North. And we have a whistle. And a That's a good point about the face-offs. Um, so we look at Kevin Finneran. He gets a celebrated goal. But as you were saying about the face-off? No, I was going to say that's a very good point about the face-offs. A lot of people may not, you know, may bypass that play. Coming on you. If you have a good face-off in this game, you get to play offense every time before you play defense. And, you know, like in any other sport, you can't score on defense. So um, it, to have a good face-off made in lacrosse is extremely important to give you the opportunities to score goals. All right, Dennis Nealon of the South got tied up with Mike Conway of the uh, North. Should point out that Finneran stars in the major indoor lacrosse league as well with the Philadelphia Wings. He has had a great career there in All-Pro, perennial All-Pro. We have a foul, I believe, on the North team. Foul on the North, so the South will continue to have a chance to work at John Gorham. Now, they'll have to keep it in the box area, which is the red area you see on the field. Um, as long as they keep it in that box or the ball hits the ground, which it just did, it's a slow whistle, and the referee will allow them to get one shot off. 
ball hits the ground and, and now there will be an extra main opportunity for the south. And the call. 30 made seconds. By the referee. Draw blue. It's a technical 30. That'll be a technical foul, 30 seconds. Uh, probably checking a cutter as he went through. Um, so the south squad will have a extra main opportunity, a six on five for 30 seconds. So the south and the white jerseys, they have the extra man situation. Joe Bedell with the ball now for the South as they work it around the perimeter. Let's see how they take advantage of this. John Connolly just with a chance of the ball in tight. And it was thinner and it was taking the shot, but that skips along the turf. Quickly putting him back in play. As you see here, the North is one on one, one for one on extra man opportunities. The South is 0 for 1. Um, these guys, again, probably haven't had a lot of chance to work on anything as far as plays go, but these kids are all good enough players. They can improvise. Mark Millen had a wonderful opportunity as he was right in front of the uh, cage but could not finish it. So it remains four to one in favor of the South. And we're back now at even strength with 45 seconds left here in the first. Underway from Homewood Field. National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game. So the North in the blue jerseys try to work it out of their end. Take a look at uh, Andy Constant as he tried to work it upfield. Looks like the North was in the middle of a change there, trying to get some of their personnel on. We have a offsides call, it looks like. 21 seconds left. Quickly explain offsides, Dennis. Well, the, the line going down the center of the field, if you're, if you're on the defensive side of your field, you have to have three defensemen and a goalie. If one of those goes offsides, if a midfielder or some other person has to stay back for him. If they don't, that's considered an offside. You always have to have four men, including your goalie, on the defensive side of the field. And with that explanation, we also come to the end of the first as the South coming from behind to grab the lead. As we take a look at the goalkeeper Jim Schwartz of the South, certainly happy with the way things have gone. The South with the lead on the North, 4-1 to one in this National Club Lacrosse All-Star Classic. Homewood Field and Baltimore, the National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game, and right off the face-off, the North comes streaking through. It was a wonderful opportunity for the North, but uh, Jim Schwartz comes up big. Dave Johnson, Dennis Way, back for the National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game, Homewood Field, the South in the white, the North in the blue jerseys, the South with a 4-1 to lead on the uh, North. Here's Johnny Conley, number 11, the Towson State University graduate, now playing for the Green Turtle Lacrosse Club in Baltimore with the ball. And a bit of surprise that the North, they've been winning the face-offs, but they're trailing in the score. Sometimes that uh, stat, if you're leading in face-offs, you might be leading in the uh, scoring department because that uh, leads the offense. And there it is, the beautiful Toyota Tacoma truck that is being given away as part of the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic. And a good-looking truck indeed from the uh, folks by uh, Toyota. So the Toyota Tacoma has a nice ring to it as well. Joe Bedell now for the South. Again, the South in the white jerseys. Bedell tried to create some offense, has a little trouble on the turf. In fact, we've got a flag coming up. Two flags issued, and we'll have to sort this one out, Dennis. I think you're gonna have a trip here. Uh, actually, they're calling a uh, hold, which will be a 30-second penalty. So once again, Zero. the South will be, be a up for a man foul. for technical 30 foul. seconds. Just held him up a little bit, yeah. Let's see uh, how this occurred. There's uh, number 14, Joe Bedell. And <laughs> I saw him slap. John looked, Rogers. That looked like him. more in a hold there. He looked like he tripped him, but uh, the ref seemed to call it a hold. So John Rogers, the guilty party. So the team in white, the South, in an extra man situation for the next 30 seconds. Just taking his eye off the ball momentarily was Gary Gate, but Gate trying to get it back. The North working hard. Now scooping up. Millet trying to feed out front. They quickly try to work around. They have a golden opportunity, but they're unable to collect the ball. Now the North in the blue jersey swarming, but right in front with a wonderful opportunity. Trying to put it between his legs was Gary Gate. Well, I, I've seen that one a few times. Um, that's kind of a, uh, a one for the fans there, I guess you could say. Uh, he calls there aren't too many people in the game that could do that. Gary Gate, he calls this apparently a backbreaker. Yeah, that takes an incredible amount of strength to be able to control the ball, to get your stick back that far, to take that shot between your legs like that. There's Andy Piazza, the guy who stopped him, and obviously he's seen that backbreaker before, maybe watching Gary Gate uh, over the years. So Andy Piazza still wondering what was going on. Indeed, it really gave the fans a chance for a few oohs and ahs as we he's go shaking his, and personal. shaking his head and laughing there, saying, what was that? Uh, and uh, in that exchange, I think the South is a man down here with a penalty. So the North has a man advantage. 
Yeah, yeah, North now low. trying to come on the attack. There will be possession. As you see right there, that was a shot, and the defender from the south was actually closer to the ball than the north, than the north was, thus they get possession of the ball. So the south trying to work it upfield. John Schwartz just came out of his crease to help out on the situation. John Connolly getting molested pretty good at the midfield. We have an inadvertent whistle here. I think the referee anticipated uh, Rob Betchley going off sides there, and he did a balancing act, and the ref blew his whistle by mistake, so it'll just stay possession south. So the south maintain. We're going to look at the John Hughes. You see a look at the, the view from behind as the south try to come out the attack. Indeed they do. South working hard, leading in this contest. Four to one, good crisp shot taken by Mark Millen, and it was Andy Piazza coming up uh, with the save. Actually, I think that was Chris Driggs from the uh, Perry Hall Lacrosse Club. Great first step, uh, former University of Virginia star, as we have a slash here, I believe. Another flag issue, but this time, oh, a little showtime as well for John Gorham as he tried to flick it behind the back and into the goal, but they're going to have the uh, man up situation, extra man situation for the south as a flag and a technical foul against the north. We're seeing a lot of fancy shots out here, but I'll tell you. Uh, they only count when they go in. Uh, yeah, the coaches down there got to be tearing their hair out because they've had some fantastic opportunities that haven't turned into goals. Four to one, though, still the score, so the south perhaps uh, thinking they can afford a little showtime stuff because they do in fact lead in this contest behind the cage steve morell morell like, for the south looks like you're in a one for one set here with morell behind gary gate puts it in the net a goal for the south nice feed by steve morell and gary gate that time no backbreaker just a goaltender breaker oh yeah gary's got probably one of the most incredible kids around placing the ball when he takes a shot as you can see right there looks like the goalie has a good angle gary takes a step boom right over his stick it looked like he had it covered had the angles covered but gary beat him anyway a lot of velocity on that shot and he of course plays for you at the uh, mount washington lacrosse club yes he does i'm blessed <laughs> believe me not a bad guy to have lead your offense no that's for sure you better believe it in fact gary gate is gonna perhaps lead the offense again for the south as he is on the face off the scrum for the faceoff for the north. That was Steve Gahuli. And the south. So they lead now 5-1. to one, And after the north got out to a 1-0 lead, the momentum continues in the south's favor. As John Connolly spinning around. Look at the stat. No goals now in 20 minutes uh, for the north. The north, the big stick for the north, working hard. Rob Graff. South doing a nice job here of uh, harassing the north on the ride. And they eventually get the ball back. Great job there. A lot of hustle. For the south. Trying to come on the attack once again, just over the head of Joe Bedell. Bedell, under heavy pressure, offering his stick of Steve Gahuli. Bedell now trying it, goes across the crease. Tough feed there. And it'll be north possession. So north in the blue, trailing the south in the white with 13.46 left in the second quarter. Five to one the score in favor of the south. And it, if you'll notice, Dave, every time there's a change of possession, you'll see the midfielders uh, for uh, the team that is now riding, the defensive team, run to the box. And you'll see kids like a number 24, Jeff Clodson, and a uh, number 17, Court Sandrum, come on the field. They're long stick defensemen, basically meaning they're taking the position of the midfielders to play defense. And then once a change of possession comes, they will then come back to the box and get midfielders back on the field. So now the North trying to come back on the attack. Dave King on the ball for the North. Works it back out to Gahuli. Del Dressel now. He's got plenty of moves. Dressel, good pressure by Jeff Clodson. Now Brian O'Keefe. O'Keefe collects the bounce pass. It's the one advantage of turf. The true bounces coming streaking in there now. Once again, Gahuli. In the north, plenty of uh, movement. Del Dressel now. 12.37 left here in the second. The north trying to create something down by four goals. Dressel gets his head taken off. That was and Jeff Clouds in number 24. One of my players over at Mount Washington tried to go over the head, and I think he white. got more of the head than he got more of the stick. Seconds. 24 oh, white. So an extra man situation. Let me man down for, 30 for 30 seconds. Is look at Dressel. That's Clodson. 
Yeah, Del Dressel there, number 90, four-year first-team All-American. One of two guys, really, in modern-day lacrosse, he and Frank Urso at the University of Maryland, to have ever accomplished that. That's uh, an incredible feat. Send me some money. <laughs> so the North working from behind. Mike, do you see him? Do you see him? And a goal for the North. You're out. You're out. Andy Kraus is able to put it in the net. Sorry, boys. Oh, Kraus scoring to make it 5 to 2 with 11.48 left here in the first quarter. They take advantage of the extra man situation. Yes, they do. It looks like the South was a little unsettled here. Looks like they didn't have their people. Uh, got a slide late there by number 20, Brian Volker. It just didn't look like they were, had their positioning set when that thing started because they only made about two passes and then a goal. Typically, you'll have to move the ball a little more than that. Uh, to get a goal on, on extra man offense. Just to play at the University of Virginia, look at his Virginia helmet. Mike DeSimone, though, uh, set up that play with a nice feed. So now the south of the white jerseys. Off the faceoff. Lead 5-2, to two, though, still, despite yielding that goal. And as you'll see now, the long stick defensemen are coming off the field. The midfielders are coming on the field to play offense. Kaleeb Entrigan had it momentarily on his uh, first time on the field tonight. Now Rob Betchley trying to force upfield for the North. Coming from behind was Kevin Finneran. Ball still loose as both teams desperately try to collect something. Now Dave King may have something, a breakaway. Feeding Betchley just sails over his stick. Ball to the south. And it will be a possession to the south. 10.41 left here in the second. 5-2. to two. Just a difficult pass to make when you're throwing the ball back behind you. Your whole momentum is going towards a goal, and to throw a ball behind you like that, very difficult to do. Brendan Kelly now will work it up for the south. Cuts into the box. Kelly's got some moves, takes a shot. The ball loose, desperately trying to come up with a Steve Marole. Now the chase continues at midfield. And the north will gain possession. North working their big sticks. Kevin Vadas now. Attackman for the North works the left flank. Vadas left side just outside of the box. Now to Dave King. King waits for some line changes to be made, or not line changes, but player subs to be made. John Holthouse now with the ball. We'll get it out to Chris Malera. Malera works it in the corner to Vadas. They work it behind to O'Keefe. O'Keefe, spinning, looks like he wants to go toward goal. Puts it right in the middle, opportunity, Pete Reich, it's in the net, a goal for the North. That's, that's just a great look by uh, Brian O'Keefe here. So Brian O'Keefe sets things up, Pete Reich finishes things up, and there you see it. Looked like he had a defenseman sliding to the ball. Reich gets right in the middle where you should be if your man leaves you in vision of the attackman. Uh, O'Keefe, and he spots him and, and dumps it inside to him for a pretty easy opportunity. Not much uh, Jim Schwartz can do about that. So Schwartz having to face point Pete Reich, uh, <laughs> Pete Reich point blank, and unable to do so. With nine minutes left here in the second quarter, five to three of the score. Dave Johnson, Dennis Way, we look at the faceoff. Gary Gate handling the faceoff once again for the South, and it looks like the South was Sean Donnelly well, I think he's run about six miles already in this contest. He's all over the place. Former Navy uh, graduate, I guess stationed out in San Diego. Uh, this kid's been all over the field. Another great athlete from Navy, which is something fairly typical in a game of lacrosse. The Army and Navy and military kids are all in great shape. Now the North quickly coming up. Tim Schur. Tim Schur leads the attack, gets it to Dave King. They work it quickly. Vadas. Vadas puts it in the net. It's a goal for the North. And just like that, we have a one-goal contest as Kevin Vadas on the receiving end of a nice pass from Dave King. Yeah, and that's just basically what you're going to see here is just a classic fast break, a four-on-three. Uh, defenseman comes down here, moves, Tim Sharp. moves the ball to the point up top. Drops it down to the side. The defense is sliding. You find the open man right here. And Vadas puts it home. So Kevin Vadas, you look at him. Vadas is an interesting story, too. He, is the, he played college ball at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology. He is the only player in the history of that college, the lacrosse player, to be in their Hall of Fame. I guess RIT mostly known for its hockey, not lacrosse, and uh, he's the only cross player in RIT's Hall of Fame. Kevin Vadas, we just saw him again. Vadas makes it a one-goal game with 7.23 left. Nice work. Vadas, I think his ambition right now is the goal. Finally has to give it off. 
Paul Gate out there for the North. Gate. This might be the first time we've seen him tonight. And Gate actually loses his stick as it's knocked away. Loose ball in the South able to come up with it. Got to wonder if Paul's hurt or something. He hasn't been out in the field a lot. And certainly he's probably the premier player on the North squad. Paul Gate apparently has had a bad back since his major in the indoor lacrosse time. And in fact, he did look like he was moving a little bit too slow and kind of lumbering there and actually lost the stick. One thing we should point out is, again, as we talked about at the top of the show, Dennis, we are seeing players from all over the country in this uh, great National Club Lacrosse All-Star game. Yes, and, and the interesting thing is, great save there. Andy Piazza asked to call up and come up big. As uh, coming in there was John Connolly as he was right at the doorstep trying to create a goal for the South. And here comes Paul in the open field. We'll see if he is hurt. Typically, Paul would take that. Opportunity right there against a the short stick midi. Paul Gate works it to Chris Johnson. The interesting thing about these kids coming from all over the country is you got kids here that probably have watched these some of these players on TV that they're now playing on the same team with, both in the indoor lacrosse and when a lot of these stars like the Gate brothers and and Mark Millen when they played in college and now they're playing on the same field with them. I, I'm sure it's got to be a thrill for a lot of these kids. Kevin Bottas gets it back out to Andy Kraus. Kraus has a goal this evening. The North again in the blue trying to equalize this game. Kraus takes the shot, and Schwartz is there for the save, but it's knocked back behind Cage, and the North maintain the attack. Kevin Vonis appears to be dangerous from this angle, but he's shut down, closed off from the opportunity. Good defense on the part of the South. Court Sandstrom once again playing strong defense for the South, but it'll be possession for the North. Hey, Jim Schwartz getting a lot of pressure here uh, in the second quarter and uh, seems to be uh, equal to it. He's had a, had a lot of point-blank shots. Andy Krause now for the North, working hard, goes to goal, takes the shot. Schwartz once again is able to come up with it. And now the South, they quickly want a counterattack. Racing upfield, Brian Volker for the South. Puts it across the slot, and it will go Junior. over the uh, touch line, and it will be possession to the north. Brian Volker there, number 20, uh, also a Johns Hopkins University graduate. Probably, again, one of the better athletes out there. Brian is just a, just a true workhorse who, once again, plays for me at the Mount Washington Lacrosse Club. Played on the 94 world team. For the United States. Stavanidis comes up with a steal, the shot, and it's a goal for the South. And once again, it is Mark Millen who was able to put it in the net for the South as he was wide open. And the South now back with a two-goal cushion, six to four. That's Mark Millen's second of the evening. Yeah, Mark is, if, if you see here, Mark is, most people would say, is, is stronger with his left hand than his right. And take a look at this right-handed shot. Um, I think you'd have trouble convincing Piazza that he has a stronger left hand than right, but Mark was the MVP of the club championship game played here last year, playing for the Long Island Lacrosse Club. Got a job with STX in Baltimore and now plays for us at the Mount Washington Lacrosse Club, so he was a, a nice pickup to get. Del Dressel for the North. Talk about uh, Mark Millen, he was the most feared attack, but at the... Uh, Competition in Manchester, England. A timeout called by the North with 3.46 left here in the second quarter. And the North trailing 6-4. to four. And We see the, the back of one of the North players. I believe that uh, might be Artie DiCarlo coming into the contest. First time we've seen him tonight. So DiCarlo works behind the cage with 3.42 left. Here in the second quarter of play, the North, the team in the blue, trailing by two goals, 6-4. to four. Del Dressel. Dressel comes right in, takes the shot, it's wide. Vadis going for the rebound, but we have a whistle before that. I think they said he yeah. stepped in the cage. Yes, he did. He, he dove for the shot, and when he came down, it's fine to dive and have the ball break the plane of the goal, but before he, before the ball went through the plane of the goal, he fell into the crease. Jeff Clodson bringing up the big stick, and he'll go back to his defensive position as the south to get things sorted out. And the aforementioned, and number six, Mark Millen with the ball, so he uh, is keeping very busy tonight. Good defense by Mike Conway on Millen, and they chase Millen to the corner. They now work it out to John Connolly. That's JC, as he was referred to in the huddle, with 2.52 left here in the first half of play. Now watch the opposite side here. They'll be looking to set a pick up here. John's going to take his man like he's going one-on-one, -on -one. and there's your pick right down there low. It didn't look like it was too effective. It didn't look like there was, uh, you know, that they were really too. There's another pick on the other side. 
So basically, they're just they're just picking opposite side, and trying to break a man up top. Great camera angle to see the pick. The South, though, maintaining possessions. They quickly try to work it. Now giving chase is John Connolly. North must possession. Have yeah, must have deflected a shot. Yeah. So that's why the South player the closest to the ball. So Mark Millen once again will set things up. Correction, that is taking the shot. John Conley, it's in the net and a goal for John Conley of the South. And once again, now a three goal cushion. So they start to build things back up. They led it by as many as four. Now it's seven to four in favor of the South here in the first half. Yeah, and John Conley from the Green Turtle across. But like I said, he can go right or left handed as a defensive midi here. You don't know which way he's going. He decides to go to his left and look at the accuracy. Close corner. That's a, that's a really tough shot. You're looking at a very small margin of error there. And he just bangs it right over Piazza's uh, shoulder. Man, Brendan Kelly, four. The South facing off against Steve Gahuli. Excuse me, I guess that's Sam Seibert now hey, who's in the goal for the North squad from Wichita State Lacrosse Club. All right, good catch there, Dennis. They've uh, changed goalies. It's only Andy Piazza. It's Sam Seibert who's coming to the contest. And we're going to see just about everyone out here tonight, so there will be changes. But Jim Schwartz remains in goal for the South. There's the North, Kevin Vadis now. And the North quickly working it around. Trying to create Artie DiCarlo. And goalies are funny. Some like in an All-Star game like this, some may like to switch quarters. Some like to play half. So I think as a coach, you probably leave that decision up to the goaltender. What would you rather do? What he's most comfortable with? And in this case, it looks like the North is going to flip-flop quarters. 52 seconds on it. Kevin Vada struggled to handle it. Could not. It goes over to the South. So frustration for him and the North with less than a minute left in this first half of play. So the South quickly coming up. MV Whitlow with the ball in the south with the 7-4 lead. Still working at midfield. Cavallero. Todd Cavallero. Right side of the box. Looks like he's going to go behind the cage, look to make it a feed. Cavallero from the Corning, New York area, which has produced a lot of great lacrosse players, the high school programs up there, Corning East and Corning West. Good defense on the part of Mike Conway. Meantime, they work it right in front. The South will have to give chase with three seconds left. I don't think they're going to get another shot off. Two seconds left. And uh, Caleb Entrigan with the ball, but he's not going to get a shot off. So after 40 minutes okay, nice of this National Club Lacrosse All-Star game, it is the South leading the North in this contest by a count of 7-4. to four. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first half of play. And then Dennis, what jumps out at you? Shots and ground balls fairly even. Saves again, seven saves for Jim Schwartz. The face-off stat jumps out at you, 9-4, to four, which is a over 2-1 to one ratio for the North. You've got to be feeling good about that going into the second half if you're trying to make up this deficit. Pretty much everything else is fairly even. Let's take a look at some of the scoring leaders from the first half. Indeed, uh, Brian O'Keefe has been the uh, playmaker for the North. Yes, he has. And if you look, if you look at the uh, scoring, it's pretty well distributed. Uh, Brian's had two assists, and everybody else chipped in with one goal. Okay, Rob Betts, in fact, getting the first goal of the game, but the South are jumping out to the lead. Let's take a look at who's been racking them up for the South. And uh, Mark Millen, indeed, I think he likes uh, these kind of all-star competitions. Yeah, Mark's a gamer. You know, he's he's uh, leading the pack with two goals. Kevin Finneran, also two goals. And then uh, Steve Marole and uh, Gary Gate. Gary with only one goal. Kind of a surprise. And Paul Gate for the North, no goals. Dave Johnson, Dennis Way, back at Homeward Field, Johns Hopkins University, the National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game, we underway the second half. And the South in the white jerseys with the lead on the North, 7-4. to four. Kind of a lower scoring game than you'd probably anticipate, in particular in an All-Star game. Uh, some of the players that you expect to score a lot of goals, like maybe a uh, Gary Gate and a Paul Gate. I think Gary has one, I don't think Paul scored. Paul limited time so far tonight on the turf. Is Kevin Finner and with streaking through but we have a whistle meantime and it'll be possession for the south so the south we're going to chance to work it again putting it in play john hughes now todd cavallero cavallero working hard try to get a shot off he's closed down by two defenders momentarily cavallero plays for the Ooh. cavallero takes a shot it's in the net a goal and make it eight to four now in favor of the South is Todd Cavallaro. Nice move. He got free right in the slot, puts it home. The former Johns Hopkins University graduate. Nice little move here. Dips his, dips his stick just so the 
defenseman there can't get a check in before he lets it go and, and puts it up in the top right corner. Eight to four the score now. So the uh, South back up to a four goal cushion. They had one early in the contest, five to one. The North crawled back, made it a two goal game. And now up the face off, Mr. Gary Gate will take control. And he is fun to watch. Good time to go right now. Got the guy back on his heels. Gary decides not to. Gate works it over to Dennis Nealon. And now the South. They have been so crisp on offense to this point. John Hughes with the ball to the South. So he has put pressure on the goaltender for the North. Working hard is Dennis Nealon once again. They work it back up front. This is Gary Gate. He takes the shot, making the save, and a big time one at that. Sam Siebert. So Siebert comes up with it, but still he has to fend off another South attack. Gary let that thing go right handed and uh, Gary, you know, prominently a left handed player, but as with most of these guys, can use both hands. Todd Cavalero now for the South. Cavalero, nice move. Boy, a silky move, gets the shot off. They work it again. Tough shot. We have a whistle, though, and someone stepped to the crease. It'll be possession to the north. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're going to call Gary Gate for stepping in the crease before he let the One shot go. You can follow through into the crease as long as the ball has broken the plane of the goal. It is considered a goal. However, if you step into the crease before that happens, it's wiped out because it's a crease violation. Pete Reich has a goal tonight for the North with the ball. Reich has some space, fires a shot. This one goes wide, but it will be possession to the North because you see Brian O'Keefe is the first one back there in the blue jersey. Now Malera, Chris Malera for the North. They trail in this contest 8-4. to four. Malera gets it stick checked away. Dave King jumps back in the fray for the North, and King does a nice job to win the wall, win the ball back. King's a Penn State product, playing for the Austin Lacrosse Club in the uh, Southwestern Lacrosse League. Uh, just amazing that some of these leagues have uh, spawned throughout yeah, the country. Yeah, they, they really have. So the uh, South now. Quickly coming back on the attack, a place they've spent a good portion of the evening. 16.35 left here in the third quarter, four 20-minute quarters in club lacrosse. As we get a good look at John Conley momentarily. Nealon, they work it around right side now. So the south, dumping it there as John Hughes puts it back out to midfield. Chris Driggs on the ball. Driggs coming right down the middle. He's warded off to the side, and he was trying to dump it back to John Gorham. Gorham could not handle it. It'll go possession north. Looked like Driggs got the ball hung maybe in the top of his stick. A lot of times you'll develop a whip in the top of the stick after playing a while, and it ball will get hung in there, and you'll see a player throw the ball, and it'll end up going right at some guy's feet. That's normally because the fellow has a whip in his stick. Andy Krause trying to whip it upfield for the north. They trail 8-4. to four. Krause, nice cut. They work it tight. O'Keefe with an opportunity to save is made. And we also have a whistle. They uh, continue, though the South will have possession and does have possession. The South now has J.J. Pearl in the goal from the Green Turtle Lacrosse Club in Baltimore, Maryland, and also a Penn State product. So he makes the big-time save. Now oh, Jeff Clodson is up from his position, knocks it behind the goal. That's Dennis Nealon. And the South going to work once again on offense. They have a nice lead in this contest, 8-4. to four. To John Hughes. They're working right side now to John Gorham. John from the Wichita State Lacrosse Club. So again, as you continue to point out, Dennis, the country well represented on this field tonight. Yeah, I think the what you have out here is a lot of these players are having the thrill of their life being able to play not only at Johns Hopkins University, but alongside with some of the greatest players probably to ever play the game. The Gate Brothers, the Millens, the Clodsons, all these kids are just great players in their own right. Joe Bedell puts it over the crossbar, but a good opportunity. It'll be South possession. So the South, John Gorham now. They're working at John Conley. Looks like Johnny's setting up with an ISO here now. Again, Johnny goes right in left handy, this time going left. Very tough to cover. Connolly gets a shot off. It's in the net. A goal. So Connolly with the goal to make it nine to four. And he has done wonders tonight, John Collins. Johnny just has had an uh, unbelievable year with the green toe. Do you see here a quick first step goes to his left hand. Looks like he beats a goalie in the five hole. Watch the ball here. Looks like looks like he wasn't expecting that thing to go low. He looked like he was setting up for a high shot. Johnny goes high to low. It's a tough shot for a goalie to save. Sam Siebert, though, uh, good effort, but could not. The goaltender for the North. 
So a faceoff coming up after the uh, goal. And uh, Andy Krause in there for the North, and he wins it. Krause streaking up field. So the North find themselves down by five goals. And now they have trouble. They have to uh, scoop it up at midfield. Krause wrestle. Krause comes from a, uh, a lacrosse family. Uh, a lot of a lot of face-off specialists in his family. Uh, Andy's kind of follows in that in that category of uh, being a real accomplished face-off person. It looks like the North may be using him more and more if this uh, if this lead gets uh, a little bigger. Steve Gahuli takes the shot, and the save is made. Nine to four with 13:07 left here in the third quarter. Talk about Andy Krause, a lot of knee problems. It's a wonder he's still out there, but that's a part of the love of the game. You play through whatever pain you may experience. Well, that's one of the things that makes lacrosse a great sport is these kids aren't playing college club lacrosse. They're not playing for millions of dollars. They're playing out here because they love the game. And, uh, you know, it really is truly an amateur sport. Um, you know, the, most of these, or I would say all of these guys out here have regular nine to five jobs they're working, and they're out here playing lacrosse just because they love the game. Steve Gaholi on the ball now for the North. So they quickly come back. Mike DeSimone. DeSimone has trouble. Loose on the turf. Brian O'Keefe trying to scramble for it, but the South doing a good job of swarming on defense. And it'll be possession for the South. That's good de team defense. Three white shirts swarmed around Brian O'Keefe. And little he could do in that situation. Nine to four the score. The team in the white, the South leading the North in this National Club Lacrosse All-Star game. What you see here, the shots on cage with South with 27, North with 22. Both goaltenders playing pretty well, I'd have to say. It, you know, the uh, South has a five-goal lead, but I think probably South has gotten some better shots, too. Mark Miller with a nice feed, taking the shot, Brendan Kelly. And Sam Sieber was in position, and now the North trying to counterattack. Anytime you see a, a kid take his stick in and put it low like that before he shoots, you're tipping off the goalie as to where you're going to be shooting the ball. Very few times we see a kid uh, stick go low and then come up high with the shot. So if you saw that time, Sam Siebert went to his knees as soon as he saw Brendan Kelly bring his stick low. Made yeah. the save. Del Dressel now for the North. Dressel gets a good move. Gets around the defender, but then is closed off. Try to get it back to Brian O'Keefe. The South does well, and they kind of clean things up. So J.J. Pearl, the South goaltender. Good outlet to the Three, South. Sean one, Donnelly whips it upfield. Former star at Navy. Great look by Sean. North. Great look by Sean there. Uh, he had a fast break situation. The defenseman slid early and left the underneath attackman wide open. Uh, the look was good. It looked like the pass was pretty good. It just wasn't handled, maybe. So then out the North with the possession. Dave King. King looks like he'll go behind goal. Paul Gate is on to the right side. King now replaces where Gate was. They try to work it in the middle. It's intercepted. So the South, once again, work at the quick counterattack. May have looked good tonight as that South team, John Rogers. This is Plodson. Plodson. Pretty flick. As they try to come on goal, good effort for the South, as that was Mr. Mark Millen, a little showtime stuff. Remember we said earlier, watch Clodson's stick number 24. Just a great, great athlete, a great stick for a defenseman. You don't see defensemen making behind-the-back passes like that very often. Steve Gahuli comes upfield. They're working it close. That's Paul Gates. See what he can do. And I think Gates has stepped in the crease. Yes, he did. We also have a flag up here at midfield. Symphony of Whistles, 9.45 left. In the third quarter, 9 to 4, the South leading the North. Look at Paul Gate. He is to the left of your screen. That's John Clodson, who uh, looked a little bit like the defenseman of Paul Gate with that behind the shoulder flick. Yeah, he, it's kind of funny. Clodson plays in the indoor league for the Baltimore Thunder with a short stick. And this kid's a guy that's been a defenseman his entire life. Takes a short stick into the indoor game. And again, it's just a, you know, has a fabulous stick for a defenseman. You just don't see that that often. So we look at Paul Gate, uh, hampered by back problems from his indoor lacrosse playing days. But well, there was no combination finer than the Brothers Gate at Syracuse. Brian O'Keefe puts the ball in play. You have an extra man situation here for the North. Gate takes the shot, and it whips to the left. 
believe the South was caught with too many men on the field, which will happen in all-star games. Yeah, Legal procedure. Yeah. DeSimone comes right in. It's in the net. A goal for the North. So, indeed, Mike DeSimone is able to net one for the uh, North on the extra man situation, make it 9-5, to five, and they close the gap to four goals with eight minutes, 40 seconds left. DeSimone from the Suffolk Lacrosse Club in the USCLA. Nice move here. Dips under the defenseman, tight ropes the crease, and dumps it low past J.J. Pearl. So DeSimone with one goal, one assist on the evening. DeSimone played his college ball not too far from here over at Towson State University, originally from Long Island, New York. Andy Krause. They work it upfield. The North come on the attack. Dave King, he's done a nice job tonight as a playmaker for the North. Gets behind the cage. He has Vadas cutting to the left. King looking to make a fee. This is Vadas. Rob Betchley's out at the point. Now Betchley. Give it back to Andy Kraus. Kraus for the North. 7.55 left third quarter. Kraus, they work it in tight. Opportunity for Paul Gate. Paul Gate finishes. It's in the net. A goal for the North, and you get Gate point blank. That should be outlawed. Good luck. Yep. That should be outlawed. If you're a goalie and you're seeing number 14 cutting under his man like this, and you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're just praying, basically, because there's not much you're going to do here. The Gate brothers, with all the great fakes, if you look how many times, you know, J.J. Pearl goes for the fakes, and, and eventually Paul finds the open net. There's nothing you can do there. Fort Sandstrom was there on defense, but it seemed like his like, let me have, let legs me were it. moving in all the wrong directions. Oh, so a good look at Paul Gate. Yeah, in a minute. What they have done for the sport, the Gate brothers. Yeah, they the really south quickly on the counterattack after the faceoff. The Gate brothers basically have revolutionized the game. Um, not only with the way they play, but also the infiltration of a lot of Canadian players now coming down to play lacrosse in the States. The first time I saw the Gates play, I was a play-by-play -play broadcaster for Navy Lacrosse, and believe me, you try to broadcast the game, but you found your jaw dropping more often than not when the Gate brothers were on the field. Chris Johnson for the North team. North trails 9-6, to six, so it's a three-goal game now, thanks to Paul Gate with that goal just moments ago. 6.34 left here in the third. Kevin Vadas now. I have a funny feeling as the clock run down, runs down here, you may be seeing more of Paul and Gary Gate on the field. Chris Johnson just took the shot. It'll be possession north. And it's showtime. You want the showtime players. Rob Betchley now. Good look behind the goal, behind the back flick. We got to step back. And the south is going to come up. Well, the south is trying to streak up field. Billy Durnall. We're in this contest 9-6. to six, Trying to scoop it up for the south. Joe Detour. Now the South definitely on attack. Nice behind the back flick and the race to the line. It'll be possession style for Steve Marole, a little showtime. And Caleb Entrigan also in the contest now for the South. Steve Marole. Good look at him. Work it back out to Gary Gate, and now the South work it around. Here comes Mark Millen. Watch that first step. Just blows by the defender. Millen. Hard shot. The South will have possession once again. They quickly put it back in play. Mark, Kept the it. MVP of the 94 World Games in Manchester, England. Voted the most valuable player for the games. The most valuable player of the club championship game last year. Gary Gates, somehow he got that shot off. Amazing. But the North able to come up with the save with 5.13 left. In the third quarter of play. North trailing. 9 to 6. In close, but they're calm and cool to handle it. J.J. Pearl for the South, the goaltender. Mike Conway, the big stick, though, scoops it up midfield. South had a great opportunity there on the fast break and just didn't make the, the pass. He had Clodson breaking up with nobody near him for a fast break. Paul Gate, Rob Betchley makes a run. Instead, it goes out to Kevin Vadas. Vadas trying to get the turn ball loose. In front of the crease. Now behind the crease, Rob Betchley, he is stripped of the ball. And it's indeed, Gate. Did, yep, J.J. Pearl is able to come up with it. That's a lot, of the, a lot of times you don't hear that about the Gate brothers, is they play all ends of the field, too. Gary's one of the better defensive middies we have on our team at Mount Washington. Because of all their offensive prowess, you don't really hear too much about what they do between the lines. But they're great defensive players. They hustle. They're good ground ball people. Mark Millen. He's a good shooter, fires a shot, it's in the net, a goal for the South, and Mark Millen now has a hat trick for the South. That's the third goal of the night, makes it 10 to six. So uh, as you see Mark here, this is just pure speed, runs by his defender. That was Mark's third goal of the 
Sticks the ball in the top left corner. All-American from Massachusetts. And now look what the goaltender has to face on this occasion. And look out. Looks like Andy Piazza is back in goal for the North, and maybe he wishes he wasn't on that occasion. If you saw right there, Mark brought a stick almost halfway down, and Piazza went down with him, the goaltender. Mark did go from sidearm up high and whizzed the ball right over Piazza's head. The North quickly, Mike Conway works well, and Conway streaks for the North. Have a great opportunity. Dave King the shot. It's in the net, and a goal for the North. Dave King nets it for the North. And just like that, they close it back to three goals, 10 to seven. The offensive flurry here with 3.13 left. Look at Dave King. This has got to be a thrill. Dave King's a local kid here, grew up here, went to Towson High School, which is about, which is about uh, 10 minutes from here. Nice dunk by the defenseman on the fast break. King goes close side, beats J.J. Pearl. It's got to be a thrill for a local kid. Score a goal here in his hometown. And we're in Baltimore, Maryland. Johns Hopkins University, Homewood Field. I'm Dave Johnson, along with Dennis Way. He's the head coach of the Mount Washington Lacrosse Club. You're watching the National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game. And in Club Lacrosse, the highest level there is in the United States. Del Dressel with the ball for the North. The North is in the blue, the South in the white jerseys. The South with a 10-7 lead, though. So we get a look at the Gahuli. And you notice the faceoff starting to play a big role here, too with possession with the North. If they're going to make a comeback here and try to close in this game up a little bit, the faceoffs are going to be key. Rob Betchley is behind the cage. Try to work it out front in the South. We'll have possession. The big JHU logo to midfield. So the South wasting no time and coming up field. Here comes our friend Mr. Donnelly again. Sean Donnelly oh, takes the shot. And Piazza is able to clear the traffic. He had Mark Millen overlapping on the right side. Now the North. Vita slow shot. That was tough, but J.J. Pearl was able to handle it. Now he got trouble. You have a, you have a six on five here. Delayed break. Back to Clodson. Another big stick. He sends that one. Piazza handles it once again. Starting to get into some racehorse lacrosse here. And then we go. Mike Conway. It looks like the night of the big sticks all of a sudden as he takes a shot. Now close in. Great save. Bensley was right there. J.J. Pearl made the save. Dave King behind the back. And this one sails over to the far touch line, and it will be south possession. A minute 27 left. And you're right. Somebody sounded a gun. We just had a track meet. Yeah, they, I know the Belmont was run <laughs> today, but uh, this looks like racehorse across out here. A couple of these defensemen taking these shots from very far out create fast breaks going back the other way, too. But look at the substitutions that are made in the game of lacrosse. Rob Betchley fires a shot. J.J. Pearl gets down to make the save as we look at Rob Betchley. Pearl's a scrapper. He's uh, probably not the most highly touted uh, goalie that's ever played. He went to Penn State, never made All-American there, but he's just a scrapper, street fighter kind of guy you'd like to have, I guess, going down a dark alley with you. <laughs> Under a minute left in the contest, uh, rather in the third quarter. You look at what J.J. Pearl has to face from out front. Coming in, shot on goal again, and Pearl is able to come up with a save. For the North, John Holthouse had an opportunity. Dave King. Now for the North, time running out, feet in the middle. Loose ball. And the South once again able to come up with it. 24 seconds left. Clodson leads the charge. Works it over to Marol. Marol gets it back into Clodson. He takes a shot. It's in the net. It's in the net. A goal with 15 seconds left. Credit that to Jeff Clodson. Once again, you see the stick work of Clodson, the Portland State product. Comes down, gives the ball up, does the right thing, but stays in the play, which is, which is smart to do. Gets it back and just sticks the thing in the top right corner. So, Great play. Three corners in the books here in Baltimore. The National Club All-Star Game for the <laughs> Hall of Fame Cross Classic. Reason for the South to smile. They lead the North 11 to 7. We're coming back with more. Stay there. <laughs> What's up, Ma? Dave Johnson, Dennis Way back at Homewood Field, Johns Hopkins University as we start the fourth quarter of this National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game as part of the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic. The North in the blue jerseys, the South in the white jerseys, the South leading 11-7. Again, Club Lacrosse, the top level of lacrosse. A lot of former college superstars on the field as Artie DiCarlo with the ball for the North. Look at the face-off situation. The North with a commanding lead in that department, yet... They trail in the one that counts, and that's the scoreboard, 11 to 7. Looking for a feed out front. Cutting there was Pete Reich. Reich now had to go all the way out to the right side to recollect. Now Artie DiCarlo once again. 
And if you're the North coach is looking to make a run to get back into the game here and get tie this thing up or get it a little closer, you've got to be happy the fact that you're that you're uh, ahead in face-offs because that may come in handy towards the end. Sean Donnelly now after the interception. And we have a flag coming up. The North get the ball back. Andy Constant with it. I thought I saw a flag thrown. No flag. What an appointment with the eye doctor on Monday morning. <laughs> the South again in the white. One white, one white, coming, one white. It's John Hughes. Gets stripped of the ball. Now on the right side, the North. Trying to get back at this one, 11 to 7. Dennis, what about it? We've seen 18 goals. Is this what we typically see in club lacrosse? Yeah, uh, club lacrosse is a faster pace game than you'll see in the college because they play the international rules, which basically the main difference is that when the ball rolls out of bounds, you won't hear horns and substitutions. It's just everything's through the box, on the fly, very much like hockey, and uh, it keeps the pace of the game quick, and you also get opportunities when you make those exchanges, just like, for instance, in a hockey game, if you make a good line change, it may end up in a goal. Same thing in lacrosse. And if you're interested in club lacrosse anywhere in the country, make sure you call the Lacrosse Foundation. And they'll be able to set you straight and help you out. The Lacrosse Foundation is based in Baltimore, Maryland, right here at Johns Hopkins University, in fact, is where the uh, office is located. And it, that number is area code 410-235-6882. Joe Bedell trying to have the number. They work it right side and with the goal once again, Mark Millen. Actually, you make it John Gorham. Gorham puts it in the net, not Millen. But either way, it's a goal for the South, 12 to 7. So Gorham getting the feed from Joe Bedell. Yeah, Joe sets this up, forces a slide. Defenseman gets there late. And Gorham just uh, goes from high to low here, which is a very difficult save for a goalie when you're in close like that. He's got to honor your stick up high. You drop the thing low, and he just does not have time to get there. On the faceoff, battling Brendan Kelly for this South. And Kelly goes head first in the turf, shows the hustle. This may be an all-star game, but these guys want to win. Mike Conway has trouble with the big stick for the North. Well, Brendan's a scrapper. He's probably one of the smaller guys out there, but he's got a lot of heart. Kelly, in fact, came up with it momentarily. Then on the far side, John Gorham gets tangled up. There's a flag on the play here. Looks like a technical foul, 30 seconds on a hold on the North. So the South squad will go up a man for 30 seconds. Excuse me, it's a pushing call. A pushing call against the North, the guilty player. We're looking at him, Andy Constant. And that's an interesting rule about the international rules is when you have a penalty, the penalty time does not start till you get out into the box and sit down. So you'll see the player running out if there's a penalty and hurrying up to get sitting. And as soon as they sit, the t penalty time will start. The possession south has given it a good run. Tim Sure, the defenseman for the North. So the South will put in play 16-12 left here in the game. So plenty of time for the South with the lead in the extra man situation as well. Certainly, if you're the South, you want to get a quality shot here. With a five-goal lead, you can almost put this thing out of reach. Jerry Gate with some moves, fires a shot, and Piazza's there. Now Mike Conway getting the... See the yellow lines on the field. That's what they use for women's lacrosse. Quickly upfield, Artie DiCarlo for the North. To the North, maybe a man down. By O'Keefe fires, it's in the net. A goal for the North. And that was silky. That was just a great placement on that shot. If you'll notice, most of these goalies are going to be vulnerable by their hips because they, they can't get there with the stick coming high to low. And they, uh, yeah, just look at that placement on that shot. Has a stick, Pearl, has a stick he has up high. He, he goes opposite side. He has to go all the way across with the stick to the opposite hip, and there's just not enough time. That's a beautifully placed shot by Brian O'Keefe. O'Keefe also plays with the New York Saints in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. So he keeps himself busy. It's 12 to 8 now in favor of the South. So the South with a four goal lead on the North. Again, the South in the white jerseys, the North in the blue. And after the faceoff, good hustle on the part of the South and jumping over the bench. And uh, Pat Leahy certainly uh, was going all for everything. Pat Leahy, the Cornell graduate. Somebody came out. Brian O'Keefe. The ball once again for the North. Hungry for more. Has some trouble with it momentarily. O'Keefe, though, determined, ambitious to get the goal. Comes right in. Fires a shot and give it to Brian O'Keefe. It's in the net. 
A goal for the North and O'Keefe. Make it 12 to nine, that's a three goal game. So once again, the North continues its pattern of at least getting within shouting distance. Looks like Brian's starting to take this game into his own hands here. Beats Donnelly. And uh, once again, when you get in that close, the place you want to shoot the ball, if you have your stick up high like that, is go from high to low. You don't give the goalie an opportunity to get his stick down there quick enough to make the save. And that's just a that's just a speed move by Brian. And this is Brian O'Keefe. Two goals, two assists on the evening. On the faceoff, Mike Conway brings it upfield. So the North win the faceoff. Rob Betchley. Brian, one of the top players for the Toe Bay Lacrosse Club. That stands for Town of Oyster Bay on the island in Long Island uh, in the United States Club Lacrosse Association. Thought it was French. Brian O'Keefe. <laughs> for the North. Can they crawl back in? O'Keefe again fires a shot. And the South, Jeff Clodson now. Leads the counter. Go south working quickly upfield. In possession though north, so all for not. That's just a that's a great slide, a heads up slide by the defenseman for the north. Got there quickly. Met Gary Gate when the ball got there and forced him to throw the ball out of bounds. That's no mean trick. A little bit of a dangerous pass back there, Andy Piazza. Now for the north, Chris Johnson. Johnson, good look at him as he streaks toward the box. Hardy right, DiCarlo takes a shot that glazes off the South defender. Now you got trouble. And now here he is, Gary Gate. I think he has too much room. A little showtime pass. Okay, Scott. They work it around. Hughes had it momentarily. And Mike Conway is able to scoop it up. Nice work on the part of the big stick man. So Conway. Conway! Rob Betchley now. They work it right side. Dave King takes the shot. Getting down with Pearl. Scramble on the turf. And now the south once again. That's Brian Kelly picking up that loose ball to Clodston. Now for the south. Gary Gate. There'll be possession south. The south in position and good position behind the goal. If you notice on that fast break, you had two long stick defensemen down there that were leading the break. The, probably one of the things with the plastic sticks that revolutionized the game. Uh, a lot of these defensemen have sticks almost as good as attackmen and midfielders now. In that particular case, you had two defensemen and one midfielder come down a fast break. 11.41 left here in the fourth quarter. The south. They're working it tight. A good defense on the part of the South is hungry for goal once again with John Gorham as he was checked to the turf. After Cavalero made the pass. John Hughes, look at the shots. The South in charge in that department. Hughes gets the shot off at Piazza. Good reaction, sir. Andy, I got you. Andy, it's hard, Andy. That's a tough shot there with the defenseman draped all over you. Probably not the kind of shot you're looking for with a three-goal lead and 11 minutes left in the game. Probably like to work that thing inside a little closer to get a, a better shot. Paul Gate and Aaron passed those. He was trying to find Andy Kraus. And now this continues to be a bit of a leg match. Once again, the South come on the attack. Got a double team there. Got to move the ball, find the open man. There he is. Right in front with the opportunity, a shot and a goal. Count it. As the South able to put it in, Dennis Nealon in the right position. As you can tell by the uh, helmet, he's a Navy product, playing for the Virginia Beach Sharks in the Central Atlantic League. Defenseman slid early, heads up play to look inside and find the open man. Usually going to be the usually going to be the far side man. Look how quick he gets up. that trigger up. Boom. So good stick work on the part of Dennis Dela with 10-19 left, and he gets a congratulations from the South Bench. Whenever you have a slide like that inside, typically where you look is the far diagonal man is going to be your open man. And in that particular case, that's exactly what the South did. John Conley working hard on the faceoff against uh, Steve Gahuli for the North. All is said and done, Gahuli, though, is able to come up with it. We have 9.56 left. It's 13 to 9 now with that last goal by Dennis Nealon. So the South maintaining that four-goal cushion. Gahuli. I think the North is going to start to feel a little bit of a sense of urgency here as the time kind of runs down on the clock here, and you've got a four-goal deficit to make up. Dressel going after the bounce pass. He has some trouble. Del Dressel now right side out of the box. Kevin Vadas. 
He's behind the goal. The north. Comes trying to work. Brian O'Keefe comes crashing through, and he is planted into the goalpost. They get him for stepping in the crease, though. So no goal, and O'Keefe just pats J.J. Pearl. That's kind of a tough call here. You'll see he makes a dodge. The defenseman's behind him. I think he gets pushed from behind a little bit there into the crease. If you watch it here, he has his defenseman beat. Yeah, I guess he, he did step in that crease before he was pushed. But uh, Jason got a little push at the end there. Jason Stevanidis, uh, for good measure. Exactly. Finish the uh, escort into the uh, crease. So it'll be possession for the South again. They are the team of the white. The North in the blue jerseys. Kevin Finneran with the ball. They work it in tight. Delighting in, hungry for goal once again was uh, Mark Millett. Nice little face dive there by Mark. The when you pull the stick in front of your face, oh. run down the wing just like he did. Steve Marole gets a shot off. Piazza back there to do a little house cleaning for the North with 8.24 left. Now Piazza under some pressure. So the South, they want more goals. They lead in this contest 13-9. National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game from Homewood Field, Johns Hopkins University. Rob Betchley now. Well, I can tell you, if you're on the sidelines as the coach of the South squad and you're saying we have enough goals, you're going to have 20 guys looking at you like, what, are you crazy? This is an all-star game. So don't, don't plan on seeing the South squad start to take any air out of the ball or anything. These kids are out here to have some fun, and that's the way it should be, I guess. Steve Yaholi gives it to Del Dressel. Let's see if he can start the attack. He's got Holthouse on the right. He leaves it off now for Holthouse. Now Gaholi, and they work a weave. Gaholi now streaking through, fires the shot. Earl, the goaltender, looked like he was in position. Behind the goal was Brian O'Keefe. So O'Keefe does a good job for the North, and we get a good look at him as he starts things. O'Keefe corralled. We have flags flying everywhere. A sea of yellow. Rob Betchley scooped one off quickly. There's going to be a hold call in the south there. He wrapped him around his head. 1-9, oh, I nine, believe that's uh, Jason White, Stefanides. Gold, 30 seconds. Jason... Uh, Tau again, a local product from Towson State, now lives in Dallas, Texas, and plays for the Dallas Lacrosse Club. I think that's a, a bit of an infraction. I think that's illegal in about 30 states right there. That's a mugging. That's right, and he was caught. That's all it was. So the North. Oh, Paul Gates, showtime. No, Del Dressel trying to finish it. And we have another flag here. So again, the blue team, the North, in the extra man situation. I think we have a, either an unsportsmanlike or a late hit here. It looks like a slash on number 21, Brian Kelly. So now you're really in some jeopardy here if you're the South squad. You're going to have to play four on six. So you're down two men. Six, five. All right, so the North. Watch your back. With two men in the advantage here. Coming in once again, Brian O'Keefe, and he has to skate outside the crease. They say he got in there. Now one of the, the first penalty has relief, released for the South. So the North squad is still one man up. So you'll see them shutting off everyone on the field. They can cover everybody because they have an extra man. That's Brian Volker with the ball, the U.S. World Team member. Volker finally got stick checked away now. Clodson. Volker just a fabulous athlete, great stick work, very aggressive. South doing a good job of just killing this off. And that's what you want to do right now. You really don't want to go to the goal here if you don't have to. But Dell, now we're all even. All even so the South can think about offense. 544 left. They lead this contest 13 to 9. Possession for the North. Dell Dressel. I think if you're the North squad here, you're going to have to start doing something fairly quickly. You only got about five and a half minutes left in the game, a four-goal deficit. There's plenty of time to make that up, but you certainly have to kind of get on with it if you're going to do it. we got a flag on the play. Rob Betchley. So the North getting some extra man situations here, trying to feed it out front. O'Keefe was there and also cutting was Andy Kraus. This flag's going to be the South squad has too many men on the field. If you, if you can see down on the... Uh, defensive end of the field here they have seven players including a goalie and that's one too many that's a great defensive strategy if you can get away with it they didn't <laughs> not even in an all-star game the referees call them seriously that 17, kind of thing's going to happen in all-star games there's going to be a little confusion on the sidelines with all these players never having played together before the north trying to weave it around there's paul gate he's in to dangerous territory somehow gets a shot off and that's the one thing I've always amazed about the Gate Brothers. You don't see where the seam is, but somehow the shot comes flying off. So 
the right O'Keefe had an opportunity for the North, and the South will have possession. Jeff Clods it. Really nice play pass there by Clods into Donnelly. They got a fast break going. Volks is coming for the sack next one. Volks is coming for the next one. All right, a shot to look at the uh, scoring. And uh, Dennis, why don't you break this down for us? Sure, the uh, 14 goals by the United States Club Lacrosse, that's kind of the Division One, if you will, of lacrosse. The Call League has five, and then you go down a goal apiece from that point on. And the USCLA, um, over the years, probably attracts the, the stars of the game, the Gates, the Millens, the uh, people of that nature. Um, and the Call League probably also has their fair share of stars, but probably not as many. So that, that would be something that would not be surprising, I think, in a game like this, that the USCLA has the lion's share of the goals. But again, great representation. Nine, uh, rather, 11 leagues represented here tonight. The North, not worried about leagues, just goals. Brian O'Keefe was right there outside the crease, but could not convert on the goal. And it'll be a south possession with 3.31 left. And Boy, what a great effort by Brian O'Keefe, especially here in this fourth Two quarter White's play coming. as he playing for the team, trying Two. to get him back in. And I'll tell you, Pearl just makes a fabulous save there. Like I say, he's a gamer. He's the kind of guy you want in there. A string shot taken by John Connolly. Just going to make the save when, when he has to. It's not fancy, not pretty, but he gets the job done. J.J. Pearl works as a personal trainer and uh, obviously stays in good shape, and it's showing tonight with his cat-like reflexes. Rob Betchley. And a timeout is called with 2.57 left, 13 to 9 the score. But the North has stepped things up in their effort to come back. Rob Betchley. I think what you were hearing there in the North's huddle is they're basically just looking for personnel and who they want to handle the ball and to, to get, you know, go, going to the goal with the ball. Might be Simone I to think, Brian O'Keefe. I think O'Keefe would be a good choice. <laughs> He'd be my man. O'Keefe. Trying to work it in the middle. No one able to come up with it. Gahuli was trying to run onto it and scoop it up in traffic. Instead, Court Sandstrom able to clear it for the south. And now the south. This is Jeff Clodson. They call him the Wanderer. He likes to come up. The south, Marol with an opportunity. Stick checked away. And the north able to come up with it. So now, good look at the north as they work it upfield. Gahuli. Need to get one here if you're the north. He's got Betchley. Betchley back to Gahuli. Gahuli the shot. That's wide. North possession. You look at uh, on the bench, uh, Paul Gate for the north. And uh, he's certainly shown his flashes with the stick tonight, but I think uh, he's been hampered by those back problems. We haven't seen the, the typical movement, although he did sneak in behind the defense. And you know, Paul has reason to smile. I was going to say, Paul, a, a member of the NCAA champion, Syracuse Orangeman in 88, 89, and 90. He and his brother Gary won three out of four years. They won the national championship in college. Also a member of Team Canada. Out of British Columbia are the games. Minute 27 left in the contest. We've enjoyed it. Hope you have too. The National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game. But still more fun stuff left here at the minute and a half we have remaining. You never know what these uh, players will do. You know, they're uh, going to play it to the end. Now, if you'll notice, the referees had their hands up saying to keep it in. After there's two minutes left in the game, you have to keep it in that red box area. So once it's in, it has to stay in. And if it comes back out, you lose possession of the ball, which is what just happened One here minute. for the South. But the South quick to uh, get it back. So under a minute left in the contest, just <laughs> giving everything he has is Brian Kelly on the far side. He keeps it in for the South. Now loose ball at midfield. Brian, North. just a great athlete from the Maryland Cross Club, shows some of his athletic ability there. Gahuli coming up. This is Brian O'Keefe. He stuffs it. Brian O'Keefe puts it in the net and makes it 13 to 10. And now it's down to three goals, but maybe time will not be on their side. The North with uh, 40, uh, 34 seconds left, and the North calls a timeout. Watch this. Gahuli, a great feed. Yeah, he, he draws a defense to him. As we said before, the opposite side man is always going to be your open man once the defense has to slide. And it's our man Brian O'Keefe again. He's sort of been a one-man we'll show out here tonight for the, the North. Just a, just a great field awareness here by Gahuli. Kind of fakes to the close side man, gets a defenseman coming across. Pearl doesn't have much of a chance there. All right, down by three. 34 seconds left. Let's find out what the North is going to do. All right. Let's try. Let's get another one, fellas. Come, Come on, Blue. We'll get one more. Let's go. Let's bring it in. Come on, fellas. Get one more. Come on. Come on, Keith. Let's try to stand stand in Colin, bro. Come let's on. Screw the ball. We'll try to get right down there to the attack. Ready on three. One, two, three. Go, Blue. Blue. Well, that's simple enough. I think uh, 
We don't even have to explain that one, and that's what you have to do in the final 34 seconds of a contest is just get it down. And obviously, that starts right with the face-off. You have to win the face-off first, otherwise it could be off or not. Strategy is win the face-off and score, score. quick. Yeah. Nothing too elaborate. And the North certainly has done well in the face-off department. That's actually where they've had the advantage tonight. And it looks like uh, taking the face-off will be Andy Kraus for the North. Very important face-off. Brian Kelly for the South. You look at the stat. A seven face-off advantage, 16 to nine. So Kraus. And the South with two long sticks on the wings. Tells me that the South defense has played themselves one way out of a game tonight. They've had to play a lot of defense to get the ball to their offense. And the South does what it has to do, and indeed, coming up here is Kelly. He'll take the shot. Piazza, right there. He's had a good game tonight. 22 seconds left. Let's see on the quick outlet of the North. This is Conway. Big stick leading the charge for the North. Gets it over to John Holthouse. Holthouse takes a low shot. It's lost in traffic. The South trying to clear it out, sweep it out of danger. And they're able to do so. Got about four seconds left here. It doesn't look like anything. Two seconds, happen. and that's going to be it. So the South rises again. They can claim victory. A 13 to 10 win over the North in the National Club Lacrosse All-Star Game. But indeed, we were treated to what we expected. The greats of club lacrosse just letting them hang out and having some fun. As the high fives around and time for congratulations. And probably a cold beverage afterwards and they can share club lacrosse stories. I would think so. These kids, uh, I'm sure that's a lot of fun out there, especially for a lot of these kids from all over the country. You know, this is just a, an evening for fun, and I think they did that. These are competitive guys. And you know they went after each other, but it's you know it's a lot of fun just to be out there. Mark Miller had a big night tonight uh, with three goals for the uh, South team. You see him shielded. There he is, uh, fixing his hair. Nothing new for Mark. Mark's Mark's been the MVP of the club championship last year, the World Games, and maybe the club club also game uh, indeed dennis way quite a game tonight the, the final stats interesting enough it shows that the north had the advantage in face-offs but indeed it was the south coming up with a victory yeah i think you got some great goalie play from uh jj pearl in the second half and whenever you're dominating face-offs like that but comes up on the short end of the stick it's usually because the defense has stepped up and played big and that's what happened tonight the South victorious over the North, 13-10. For Dennis Way, I'm Dave Johnson. Thanks for joining us from Homewood Field in Baltimore.